is covered in paint here with a new video for you guys this week. This week I am coloring one of my comic pages here. I am doing uh, just Act 3, so it's kind of a spoilery, non-spoilery page for you guys. Uh, you should definitely check it out. It's online. I'll put the description or link in the description. Uh, so here you can see me filling out the flats. So when you do the flats, it's really important that you color within the lines and you can get really accurate if you zoom in. Unfortunately, that's usually where I get the most messy is I just don't want to zoom in on my little 12 inch Cintiq and so my coloring can get a little sloppy uh, along with my line work. But um, I think this technique fits my work and I definitely think you could go with like a different technique if your line work's not very like, it doesn't have a lot of variation or if you want more of like a flatter look or if you want more of like a 3D like painted look. There's a lot of different techniques but this is kind of like my quick comic medium way I do it. So first I flat everything out like this with different colors. Um, they're not the local colors as you can see. Kuro is not blue and vampires aren't purple. But I choose this so that the local colors will stand out on top of them and then I will be able to like color it properly and not have any patches sticking out. So here I did a clipping mask on top of the yellow so now I have like my background atmosphere set and I'm doing the little like cavern cone thingies. Um, I'm just using the colors from the gradient and then using a multiply and then an orange for the highlights. Um, and again, that's kind of the combo is to just add your the shadow and highlights, shadows and highlights. And that's, that's as deep as I take it. I don't do much blending with um, my pages now. So I'm taking from the last page and grabbing colors from there just so that there's some like continuity with my pages and how they're gonna like lay out and stuff. Uh, you don't want to look through the pages and be like, wow, your your brown is slightly turning pink and your greens are turning yellow, you know? Unless you need to do that. It's really cool, the art of, of coloring and doing like uh, color books, I guess. Is that what they're called? Anyway, so here I'm doing the shadows now to the background layer and then I'll work into the foreground. And um, again, I'm just using normal brushes. Uh, there's some texture brushes that I use uh, that are Kyle Webster brushes. You should definitely check out his like brushes sets. They're really fun. Um, and I use those because they give it like a softer illusion and um, kind of gives you that glowy flaming look even though it's not like a glow. So now I've moved on to filling in the local colors. So um, I'm mixing like different tools to coloring in. So originally I use for big spaces the lasso tool and then I'll use the uh, pen tool for really fine details. And the closer again you zoom in the cleaner your work is going to be. So I try to at least be 50% zoomed in. Uh, sometimes I'm not <laughs> but I try. That's usually the most tolerable closeness I can get without being super inaccurate. The thing is when you use these clipping masks, you want to make sure that when you erase, like if you're outside the lines, you erase not the color, but the, the clipping mask like underneath. So the purple here, if there's a color that's overlapping out of the lines, you have to erase the purple, not the color that you're drawing with. But it's a really fun technique. It really saved me a lot of trouble because I'm just really messy at colorist. And so once I get the clipping mask all cleaned up and then I color on top of it, I feel like my colors turn out way cleaner than they would be if I just tried to freehand all of this. All right, so I've moved on to Clover the werewolf girl and she is, hello cat. <laughs> She's gonna run the rest of the tutorial. <laughs> so as you can see, I'm just um, coloring in all of the just little details of clover and cleaning it up with the colors and then notice too here I'm, I'm coloring in Kuro how he's so much less detailed because he's in the background and that's an important thing like nowadays with digital where we can just zoom in and get really like nitpicky just remember that things lose detail as they go farther away all right the next step will be adding shading so I'm gonna make another uh, clipping mask and it's gonna be over the colored now. So there's the flats, the colors, and then there's the shading, and that's all like clipping mask to that purple. 
Um, this is like a bluish purple that I usually use. I tend to just like how those shadows look, but you can also use like a different color. Um, usually people choose like a bluish purple or like orangey red kind of shadow, depending on what kind of effect you want to go. Uh, once I've colored in all the shadows, I'll change it to a multiply layer and then change the opacity to give it that shadow look. Um, you just got to play around with it till it feels right. You don't want it to be too saturated or too, um, I don't know, dark. So here I'm doing the final like atmospheric perspective touches. So I make a layer on top of all of them. It's not clipped to anything. And I then use a mask to make the color fade from the foreground. So that way we look at the vampires and know that they are closer because they're not as uh, faded out. And then we look at Kuro and we see him in the distance and we know he's in the distance because not only is he less detailed, but he's like faded. Um, this is a really fun technique and really adds like some depth. Um, I used it a lot in this because I wanted this to feel really heavy and like um, humid in here because it's a volcano. Uh, if you were in like a building or outside in a snowstorm and stuff, there's different, you wouldn't use orange, you'd use different color. You might not have it as like blatant. Uh, but using the mask to like clean up the area really helps out too. So here's the finished product. Um, you can see what I did and how I made this page. and. Uh, there's no panels or anything. I picked a simple page just for you guys to see the basic coloring method I go through. Uh, if you're interested in seeing other techniques or other ways to do comic pages, let me know. I look forward to seeing you guys next week with another video. Have a great week. Keep doing what you do best. Bye!